What's up, guys? Big Papa Drock back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And guys, today is going to be a fun one. Today, we are taking a look at what I think is probably the world's strongest Rodos, or if not, very close to it. And that's my Rodos. He's plus four. He's fully awakened. And I'm excited to show him off. Um, I got crazy lucky the other day when I pulled a, uh, what, a fully awakened soul for Rodos. And I already had a plus four one, so I had to throw it on there. And I said, you know what? It's time. Time to unveil him and see what people think. So there might be someone who has a stronger one. Who knows? But this one's pretty damn strong. And I think you'll see that pretty quickly. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look initially at the Roto skills. By this point, you probably know Rotos is an arena machine. Uh, I think one of the most terrifying aspects of this entire kit is this A1. So let's read it. Attacks one enemy. Is a 75% chance of placing a 60% decreased de uh, defense debuff for two turns. Also has a 25% chance of granting an extra turn. And that is the mechanic that makes him so terrifying in the arena. Because you never know with the RNG in this game what's going to happen. If he gets an extra turn, he can absolutely go on a rampage. I have had Rodos kill four of my champions in essentially one of his turns. Because of that ability right there, where he just goes absolutely nuts. And the other part of that is because of what his A3 does, and we'll get to that in a second. On the A2, Vitality Plunder attacks one enemy, destroys the target's max HP, max HP excuse me, by 20%. It adds that HP to this champion's own max HP. So again, it makes it harder for him to die. And again, he has that special passive, which we'll get to in a second. Um, you know, the rest of this is really re relates to being able to block revive. If you played this game for a long time, Rodos. Uh, was a true terror back in the day before they nerfed him a couple times because he was just block reviving everything. Now you have to use the skill at least three times in order to get to that block revive on his A3. And again, his A3 is a massive, massive hit. So attacks one enemy will ignore 60% of the target's defense, will also ignore unkillable and block damage buffs. So powerful in the arena when you think about Leorius or other, you know, defense type teams that have uh, block damage or unkillable up, and you can just go right through it. Enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived. This champion has gained maximum amount of HP from the Vitality Plunder skill. Rants an extra turn if this skill kills an enemy. And again, this is where he goes on the rampage. So you could have him hit this and kill an enemy, get a second turn, and, you know, maybe he Vitality Plunders one to kill another enemy, or maybe he goes right into his A1 and gets another turn, and it's just... He's a whirlwind, guys. He's a whirlwind. Take a look at his passive. Will decrease damage from enemy hits so that incoming damage from any single hit will not exceed 50% of this champion's max HP. Grants an extra turn of this damage reduction occurs. This is what's not about, nuts about him, is that if he gets hit, right, he can only lose half of his HP, so he's awesome for arena defense. But then that grants an extra turn part, he will literally cut your champion in line. He will jump right in, in spite of whoever else was supposed to go, and then he just goes nuts. And again, that RNG for arena defense and sometimes for arena offense is so, so powerful. Decreases the damage taken from bosses by 15%, decreases the damage taken from bosses by 30% as CP the Lost Ride is on the same team. Again, if you're using him in PvE, he's absolutely someone who can do some, some solo type content based off his passive and his vitality plunder. Uh, we don't care about that, though. We're only looking at him in arena. I'm not even going to showcase him anywhere else. We're going to go right into Plat Arena and show him off. There's one more thing to note about him as it concerns his skills. Damage based on attack and HP. So Rodos is one of the few champions that has two categories that affect his actual damage output. I believe Mountain King is another one of the ones that has an attack and HP based damage um, uh, scale. So you have to build him with a lot of HP and you have to build him with a lot of attack both. He needs both things to really function. So let's take a look at his gear right now. You can see I've geared him in Savage and I've geared him in Cruel. So he's got the maximum uh, amount of ignore defense possible from sets. Over here, we've got a triple roll on a crit damage piece and the weapon. So this, this is a god tier piece. Basically perfect. Only way it could be better is if it were a Lego or a Mythical. Um, and then if the roll had been attacked. But granted, this doesn't matter so much. Then we got here with the helmet. Crit damage, speed, crit rate. You can see that I put some of my, my better gear on him. Now, you'll notice I've got a lot of speed on this Rotos, and that's because, frankly, you want your Rotos to be fast. You want him taking as many turns as possible in case his skills get locked out. 
and so that he also gets to that A3, gets to that kind of whirlwind stuff going again. So speed is important on Rotos. Uh, again, Savage, uh, Savage Shield, Cripple Crit Roll, Crit Damage, Speed. And then we've got the gauntlets. Now, this is something where I would have preferred to have had a crit damage roll on the Ascension, um, but HP percentage is usable for Rotos. This boosts his attack. So HP percentage, attack percentage, crit damage, all three of those are valuable here. Um, again, crit damage would have been the best, but we got HP, still works, and it's on Cruel Gloves, uh, which is great. So again, speed, attack, crit rate. Same thing here, HP percentage again, crit rate. Now this is where, this is the one piece that I wish were a little different because defense isn't super useful for him. Um, it helps him stay alive a little bit longer, which isn't a bad thing. But if this had been, for example, crit damage, or if it had been like HP percentage with a double roll, that would have been better, would have made him even stronger. So he doesn't have perfect pieces, but there are pretty strong pieces overall. And then finally, cruel boots, attack percentage, 60%. Speed on the roll, again, to make him faster. And then we got crit rate, HP percentage, which boosts uh, his ability to do damage. For the accessories, there are a bunch of different ways that you can build Rotos. Some people will tell you to put HP-only accessories down here. Some people will tell you to put attack. It really just depends on what's the strongest thing on your account uh, and what you have the best rolls on. So for here, I went with an HP ring with a triple HP roll and an attack percentage roll. Um, and that's for him, that's perfect. You know, that's damage boosting in both of the areas that matter. I need to get a six star attack glyph when I'm out of them. So that could be stronger. And then here with the crit damage, uh, attack, HP, both of those on there. It's also a reaction accessory, which is never a bad thing because this team that, I'm, that I usually run and win isn't necessarily a go first team, just depends. And then finally for the banner, we've got an attack banner with one roll on speed and a triple roll on attack and then a flat HP. So this isn't necessarily ideal. Attack is, is good. Some people might have gone HP here, um, but I've got so much HP on him already that it doesn't matter. Let's also take a quick look at the blessing. I've gone with War of the Fallen. I think you'll see that a lot of people will choose this for Rodos if they have it fully maxed out. It's where you get bone armor stacks that can reduce your damage. Um, I believe there's a way that if you have a bolster set that it actually protects this buff um, and keeps it keeps it going, but I don't really use that on my specific offense team, um, so it doesn't really apply. But why do people use, you know, uh, Ward of the Fallen? Well, it's because you get a massive HP boost, speed boost, and crit damage boost. So again, you're boosting his damage here, and you're also re reducing the damage that he receives, which is never a bad thing to keep him alive in Arena. So let's look at the final stats. We're looking at 52k HP and look at how low his regular HP is. So that's that's insane. An insane amount of HP scaling off of that. 7200 attack, not bad. Would have loved for it to be closer to like 75, 76, but still 72 is great on this champion. He's got an absurd amount of defense, way more than you would normally see. Um 3500, so he's not he's not easy to kill. 228 speed is okay. Realistically, you really want your Rotos to be maybe 240, 250. Um, I can glyph him up to 245, close to 250 if I got some perfect rolls, but I just don't have six-star glyphs. I don't know about you, but I am constantly out of six-star speed glyphs. So that's going to have to wait for longer. So he can get stronger. And then crit rate, 106. Ideally, would be 100, and I'd have more stats elsewhere, but that's just what I had for the best gear on my count. And then we're looking at 314% crit damage. Uh, I mean, he, he hits like a tank. He hits like a tank. And again, if you look at the, at the A3 here, you're ignoring 60% of the target's defense. That's base. Add in the fact that he is in Savage and Cruel, right? And you are guaranteed to ignore 90% of people's defense, regardless of if you proc Helm Smasher or not. Um, so it's just a nasty, nasty build. So let's take him into Platinum Arena. Let's see what he can do. Um, he's quickly become one of my favorite champions to, to mess around with here um, and to, to see what he can do because he's just, he's just so hard to stop. Uh, we got a good mix of teams here. We'll start with something relatively easy. So this right here, let's see what I have pre-built for Roto. So anything pre-built, let's see, eh, block revive. Let's just do this. Let's put a arbiter i'd like to get a Cephi in here i'd like to get my rotos as well uh da, 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 and we'll throw an arbiter in there so this is an all speed all the time 
just go absolutely nuts on speed because all of these champs are built for speed. So let's go ahead and see what he can do. So right away, boost the attack. The other thing that makes him so strong is the fact that CP will cleanse off any debuffs that he gets every single turn, which is just absolutely disgusting. So he's getting hit there. We could boost again with Arbiter. We're not going to. We'll save that for the next round. Here we go. Let's annihilate this Warlord. 219k damage. And then let's end the Arbiter, 125k. I mean, it's just disgusting what he can do. We'll go auto from here on out. We're not worried about dying. We're not worried about anything. Again, this isn't a super strong flat team. So, you know, there's no real threat here. But it's just like he's just such a disgusting champion. Oh, my Lord. I mean, what do you even do? And he's so strong on defense, frankly, because that RNG factor. You know, that RNG factor where basically you just get you just get run over. Now, this is an interesting team right here. Um, I think we'll challenge this in a second. Let's take a look at this. The biggest thing with Rodos is you really don't want to run him into ultimate death knight teams. It makes it significantly harder as a single target damage dealer to actually get through the fight with any type of speed. This should be interesting. You've got Harima's passive, which could come into play here and make things a little tough. Um, so let's see. There also might be some reaction accessories on this team. It's a little bit stronger than the last team. Go ahead and shut all the skills down. Obviously, Mithrala, we couldn't get that. Let's see. I, I highly doubt that we can one-shot this uh, Usurga. I'm going to guess they probably have reaction. Yes, they do. They definitely have reaction there. So not a surprise. Um, typically, you're going to see Usurga's boat like that. Surprised we're not seeing them in stone skin, though. And we'll go through here. We got the Duchess in Stone Skin. Still haven't taken a turn with the Usurga, so let's go ahead and hit the Mithrala. Usurga's passive coming into play. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We want to get back to his turns. This is why you really want him fast, because a single target damage dealing, you need him to hit over and over and over and over again as quickly as possible. Uh, Holy goodness, that is a slow Surga. He's not really good for farming. You know what I mean? Typically, your teams with Rotos are going to take longer. I could put this on auto, but I want to I want to actually see him do some damage. I believe his I believe his A3 is back. Yes, it is. Let's see. Can we one shot? No. Oh, the increased defense. So whatever, not even increased defense, whatever this Usurga is built in, they are absolutely tanking. They must have massive, massive, massive uh, HP pool. And also Harima's passive. That's the other thing. Got to remember that the Harima's passive definitely comes into play here. Let's see if we can take him out now. Still, oh, Harima is so strong. This is why you'll see Harima on defense quite a bit, because look at how much longer it takes for me to take this down. Just based off the fact that I can't get the full effect of his ignore defense, right? So I'm sitting here and I have to slowly work my way down. Let's go ahead and go to full auto now. See how quickly this takes. I mean, oh my gosh, Arima, right? Such a strong champion. Really makes it hard. So he just got an extra turn right there. Hits it with the faded destruction. Again, Arima stops her from getting killed. We're not worried about any debuff he gets. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whatsoever, because you can count on Seafy to cleanse it off. That's the beauty of this team. Seafy will come in, will cleanse it off. We didn't weak hit there. That's great. Now we can start really going to town. So this took way longer than it should have. This is why I typically avoid Harima teams whenever I can, um, especially with Rodos. I wouldn't really challenge a Harima team typically because you're only doing single target damage. So that's a really, really tanky team. Not hard, just takes too long, right? Here's another Harima team. Let's not go into that right now. This, this, this could be interesting. This could take a long while too. As we know, this is the uh, team that you're going to see most often, which is the combo of Marichka, combo of Taras. Huge to be able to put the skills on cooldown. I'm going to go ahead and open with the... A1, I think I'm going to open on, let me see here. I don't want to hit Marichka necessarily. Actually, no, we'll hit Marichka just to show because Taras will then immediately hit us back. But let's see, how much does it hurt? Barely, barely tickled me. 
because of that ward of the fallen reduction of damage. That's usually something that can one shot a champion. And right there, we saw that it didn't really do much at all, which is just absolutely crazy. Ward of the Fallen, super, super strong ability. We'll put this Taras to sleep. We don't want to have to deal with that. Now let's finish off the Marichka. Fantastic. We want to immediately go try to get the Susurga out of the way. Boom. Sit down, son. Absolutely leveled that Usurga when you don't have to worry about Harima, right? Now the only threat is Taras and, of course, Sifi reviving. Speed him back up. Slow him down. We don't have our A3 yet. Didn't get the extra turn that time. Bit of RNG bad luck. But again, this is a super strong team overall just based on champions. I don't know about the actual count level. Um, I'm sure there are much, much stronger Taras and Marichka combos. But still, to be able to go in there and know that you can essentially own this team. Let's see if we can finish him. Oh, my gosh. Nasty. Usually, that is such a hard thing to down a Taras in basically one hit. But Rodos can do it. All right. Let's refresh the list. See what else we got here. See if we can find another team. So, this is a team I would not challenge with Rodos. You've got Ultimate Death Knight, guaranteed built, super slow. Very, very, very challenging team for Rodos to take out. You can do it. It's just going to take a long, long, long time. Let's see if we can get... Here's another Taras Marichka team. There's a Georgia team. Georgia. Uh, what else do we want to fight? Something else would be interesting to see. Is there another like, speed team we could take a look at? A lot of Harimas you're seeing. This is also relatively early in the week for, uh, for Platt. So we'll go ahead. That's a low level. Uh, Harima. Here's another Rotos. So this is, this is a, a strong team right here. Again, we've got Ultimate Death Knight. I really don't want to try to run him into one of those. It's just not smart. Um, and even with how strong my champions are, you never know. It could be a loss. Let's see if we can find. Okay. This is usually a team you probably wouldn't challenge with Rotos necessarily because if you can't get through the Cupidus's shield fast enough, you can really get in trouble with the counterattacks. Um, but let's just see here. Let's see what we can do. We'll hit the Necrit first. Oh my God. Absolutely deleted the Necrit. Now we'll go for the Chris. Just the strength, the power. It's crazy. You know, he's, he's what, two years old now at this point? Still one of the best ever. I believe he was a Valentine's Day fusion, I want to say. Along with, we got the extra turn. And now we go right in here. And we say, good night, Cupidus. And then we just finish it off. There's, that's, there you go. That's exactly what can happen with Rotos. You get that extra turn and suddenly you're just cutting through people like a hot knife through butter. Let's see, maybe one more. See if we can find another good team, another strong team. You know, maybe I'll just go ahead and challenge one of the ultimate death knights to show why you shouldn't do that. Mm, Leorius. Okay, why not? Normally, you should not challenge this team. There's a high chance I might lose, especially as Leorius gets injured uh, and starts doing more damage. But just to show how Rotos can be thwarted or how much longer it can take to actually fight stuff, you know, here you go. We've got triple stone skin. I can't do anything to the Leorius with my Rotos whatsoever. I have to just sit here and target the Death Knight. You know what? We'll just go ahead and hit it. Managed to do a ton of damage. We didn't get a weak hit there. That's the other thing you have to worry about with Death Knight is the weak hit. Uh, you don't want to end up weak hitting and then struggling to uh, finish him off because that passive this is, of his is so... Strong, you know, there are ways around it. You can absolutely do so. We got we weak hit there, I believe, or reaction. Um, you can absolutely put things like Romantu in there, but with polymorph and how prevalent it is, you're asking to be sheeped, and that's never a bad thing. We'll put it in auto, we'll target the death knight for now, try to get him out of the picture as quickly as possible. He got an extra turn, and he's out of the picture. Now we're back into it. Now we're cooking with gas. We'll take back control again. I want to see if I can get his. Uh, whatchamacallit, his A3 so we can put this Leorius down. They got two Rezzers. Say goodnight, Leorius. On to the Duchess. Couldn't kill her in one, but now we're cooking. And there's the downside, right? So try to hit the Leorius. Got to hit the Death Knight. We take out the Duchess. 
Now we only really have to worry about the uh, Python in terms of resing, but it looks like we're going to get through this pretty quickly. For a Death Knight, for an Ultimate Death Knight team, that's actually not bad. A minute 39 for Ultimate Death Knight, not a bad time whatsoever. Um, but again, you really shouldn't run Rodos into that whatsoever. You should be looking for anything else. Let's see if we can find one more super strong team to, to see what we got. Maybe one more Taras Marichka team that's, that's strong. Anything here? Anything Taras Marichka? Here we go. This, what's the power level here? Not super high. This should be interesting, though. This is, these are all the champs you don't want to fight, basically, on defense. Here you go. Dross, Marichka, uh, Uko, who can really screw, screw stuff up with increased attack, and then Pythion, who makes it harder to kill people. Well, why, why don't we take a look, though? Let's see what Rodos can do. That, okay, that was because of the uh, fear. I, for a second there, I was like, I did not, I did not click that. What happened? Um, let's see. We're gonna have to try to take down the Ross. Let's see if he's got reaction. He doesn't, so we immediately take him out. Go for the Uko. Either reaction, I believe. We'll take that was reaction. Biggest thing here is we really want to take this Marichka down. The one nice thing again is see if he's gonna clear off any of those buffs, those debuffs that uh Uko throws down. Huge. Huge to be able to do that. Uh, I really want to kill the Uko. Probably, I don't know if he's in a stun set, but you have to assume that he is. Okay, good. We got him out of the picture. We shut down Pytheon so he can't res. Now, here comes Marichka reviving everybody. Right away, try to take out the Uko, get rid of one of the revivers. Tack up, back up again. I don't really care about Taras. He's on cooldown, so he might hit. You know, he might hit a little bit. He might hit a lot, but it doesn't really matter. We're really wor we're worried about getting rid of this Python so we can get out of this fight. So let's get out of the fight. We hit. Oh, we got an extra turn. We hit again. Still did over half of his health, though. Reset. This is the beauty of Yumiko. And I've talked about this in previous showcases. You know, I think the big thing when it comes to Plat Arena is you need every champion, right? You can't just rely on one to power you through everything. Taras is really strong, but you want to have Marichka as well. Rodos is awesome, but it pays to have Sifi. You know, on the highest levels of this game, having multiple champions that go together or that have some type of synergy um, is really important. And so you want to make sure, God almighty, we're weak hitting over and over and over again. All right, finish it off. Make sure that you're, you know, that you're using the right combos. Like you can't just throw a Rotos out there and expect him to solo everything, especially in Platinum Arena. But I hope that gives you a, a good idea of what he's capable of. Uh, as you can see, I've got a strong Arbiter and a strong CP. So if you're interested in me showing off them, uh, I'll do that in a future video. Just let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you like this content. Let me know if you don't like this content. Um, I'm hoping that you like it. Uh, again, you know, I, I think it's kind of fun to get a view into uh, what a high level account looks like. Um, and then if, if you're interested, I can do an account showcase at some point and show off all the different champions I have and kind of what their builds are. So hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Go out, have a wonderful day. Go make someone else's day great. And uh, may all your summons and blessings and champ pulls and whatever else be top tier, S tier legends only. Big Papa Drock out. Have a wonderful day. Take care.